Hello everyone, welcome to Elite Engineer. In this video, we are going to see the proof of concept, a basic concept of blockchain. It's presented by me, Elite Engineer. And this is a part 5 of our blockchain course, that is introduction to the blockchain. I hope you have already seen the previous video. And then you are jumping to the part 5 of basics of introduction to blockchain. So the process in which the blocks are mined, we have already seen the mining process, right? And, the, and added to the blockchain is known as proof of work. Because we are just going from first uh, when the transaction is being created, it is stored in the block and then blocks are mined to the blockchain and then mining process we have seen and now we come to the proof of work concept. Then the process in which the blocks are mined. Okay, that is a process. We need to just highlight this, the process. <clears throat> and when it is added to the blockchain is known as proof of concept, proof of work method. Okay, so it is difficult to produce the proof, but very easy to validate. How? Okay, let's take one example so a good example of proof of work is crackling a combination of lock okay let's consider you have one suitcase okay and you forgot the lock of that but after various trying various combination of that okay you found the lock after you found that lock you can share among your family members so it is easy to get the password of the lock after you got what is actually the password of that lock okay okay so with this help of example a proof of work is crackling a combination of lock. It takes a lot of time to find the right combination. But it is easy to verify once the combination is found. Proof of work uses tremendous computing resources. GPUs are required while CPU speed is not important. You know, uh, I will just tell you one small story. I tried to mine uh, my blocks. Okay, there was one cryptocurrency recently came into picture that was I think Dogecoin or something like that. Uh, I don't I don't remember exactly. So I tried to mine that. And I don't have a GPUs in my system, so I have just CPUs and that is of Intel i5 processor. So when I started mining my blocks, uh, so I kept it on for 24 hours maybe. And the Bitcoins which I got was 0 0.00001 BTC and that was really very less. So what I want, want to say, what I want to convey with this is, if your GPU speed is much more, then you can earn a great amount of Bitcoins or Ethereum or whatsoever cryptocurrencies you start mining. Okay, so, uh, okay, let's go ahead with that. It also uses a lot of electricity because miners are doing the same work repeatedly. Find the nonce to meet the network difficulty for the block. And a common question is why you need a powerful GPU instead of CPU for mining. So, okay, so I already told, but there is a basic concept behind this. Well, as a simple comparison, a CPU core can execute 4 32-bit instructions per clock, whereas a GPU like a Radisson HD 5970 can execute 3200 32-bit instructions per clock. You can see the difference here. It's 4 and it's 3200. Right. So in short, the CPU excels at doing the complex manipulations to the smaller set of data, whereas the GPU excels at doing the simple manipulation to the larger set of data. And since mining is all about performing hashing and finding the nonce, it is highly repetitive task, something that GPU excels in. So that's why we use GPU for mining or for using the proof of concept, proof of work. I'm sorry, I'm again and again using the proof of concept method, proof of work method, okay, for blockchain, okay. Why miners are motivated to invest in mining rigs? Why, why miners just run their system and just consume electricity like hell? Okay, so there is a basic concept. Nothing in this world is free and no one will work to you, for you, free of cost. Okay, so when a miner has successfully mined a block, he earns a mining fees as well as the transaction fees. That's what, that's what keeps a miner motivated to invest in the mining rigs and keep them running 24-7, thereby incurring substantial electric bills. Okay, so now we'll see the immutability of blockchain. Okay, so in a blockchain, every block is changed to the previous block. We have already seen in the previous videos, like, uh, just a sec, like these are the set of transactions. And when the set of transaction with the help of timestamp, and then here will be my hash of the previous block. And then these all will generate a hash. Okay, this all will generate a hash. And that hash will be stored in the next block. Okay, and this hash will be stored in the next block. And then there will be some set of transactions, then there will be some timestamp and then there will be the hash of the this all block which include the hash of the previous block. We have already seen this. Now in the block, 
in the blockchain every block is chained to the previous block right i have already told you in the previous video and i have already explained you in this video also through the use of cryptographic hash okay a block identify changes if the parent identify changes now what happen here is if i change something here what will happen here is his cryptographic hash will change now this in turn causes the current block children to change which affects the grandchildren and so on now this cryptographic hash will have to be changed in this and then the cryptographic hash of this block will be changed and the this process further continues a change to a block forces a recalculation to all the subsequent blocks which requires enormous computation power this makes the blockchain immutable a key feature of cryptocurrencies like bitcoin and ethereum now what happen here what i am saying here is if someone tries to change something in the middle block let's say okay then what happen here is all the previous blocks all the previous block cryptographic hash will change now he has to change he has to use his computation power to change all the cryptographic hash of the previous blocks so what makes blockchain is that it it becomes immutable right now as a new block is added to a blockchain the block of the transaction is said to be confirmed by the blockchain right so this is a confirmation 1 this is a confirmation 2 and this is a confirmation 3 okay when the block is newly added it is deemed to have one confirmation as another block is added to it it's number of confirmation increases okay so let's see let's try to understand with the help of figure on the right hand side okay so figure shows the number of confirmation that the block in the blockchain have so here i have already shown the confirmation 1 2 and 3 the more a confirmation a block has the more difficult it is to remove it from the blockchain right so as a difficulty level as the confirmation will increase so it is difficult to remove it from the blockchain i can't remove this block just like this from the blockchain okay so it become difficult right in general once a block has six or more confirmation right so so this is a main point like when the block has six or more confirmation it is deemed to be infeasible for the to be reversed we cannot reverse it and therefore the data stored in the blockchain become immutable that's why we call blockchain as a immutable ledger now blockchain will see in more detail in the previous videos you have learned that a block contains nonce okay a time stamp and a list of transaction that was just a simple simplification to just uh, get to uh, insist you to understand the basics of blockchain okay so in the real implementation a block consists of a block header now we are going to see what is block header the list of transactions we have already seen the list of transactions the block header in turns consists of the following now what is my block header that is a point and we are going to see this in my upcoming videos in much more detail actually what is a block header in blockchain so starting with the block header the hash of the previous block the time stamp the merkle root the nonce and the network difficulty target okay now note that the block header contains the merkle root and not the transactions what i have told you in the previous video was there is some list of transactions that was coming at this place so that is not the block header mind it right and the transactions are collectively represented as merkle root now what happen here is i have just collected all the transactions and set as a merkle root and told it as a merkle root Detail details of which will be discussed in the our next upcoming videos right so thank you for watching this video regards elite engineer